So let's just start here. What is trauma and how would we define it? So I've heard this definition several times where somebody will say that we'll have a traumatic experience, but the feelings that we take away from it, what we carry from that traumatic experience, that that in itself is trauma. And so, and I really like that definition because I think that it helps to explain that why trauma seems to be so unique to each person yeah. and why there isn't necessarily one way to define trauma in and of itself. But I think if we look practically at what that means is that it really is when somebody, something happens to somebody, they're left with that feeling, but that feeling in and of itself overwhelms their capacity to function on a regular basis, even function the way that they did before experiencing that traumatic event. Does that make sense? Yep. Yeah. 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 I've always liked the quote, and I, I know we've used it on the podcast, but I think in this episode it mm -hmm. needs to be repeated yeah. by Dr. Gabor Mate that says, trauma is not what happened to us. Trauma is what happened inside of us. And so there's, there's really a, a whole range of things that can create trauma. And I think what you just said, Heather, is why so often in a pure desire group or in our process with people, we are all going back to early years. And I, I know some people feel like, oh, well, you know, what's my childhood got to do with it? Or I want to focus on the current yeah. problem. But it's exactly because we were children with developing brains that things happen to us and our, our mental capacity, our emotional capacity, our relational capacity hadn't developed to the point to mm -hmm. know what to do with it. And yeah. so we may have fairly routine things from the from the outside. If someone were to look at it and say, well, that seems fairly you know minor or routine, that, that may be a part of our trauma story because it happened at a time in our life when we were a child that our brain didn't know what to do with it or how to, in, how to handle what happened. And so it became kind of a trauma-inducing moment that inside of us yeah. we began to hold on to things or make decisions about things or as... I'm sure we'll talk about in the episode, our brain internally began to make decisions about how to stay safe, what to do to feel protected, and, and how to avoid that situation again. And that's where trauma has a lingering impact because that part of the brain doesn't tell time. It doesn't have a clock or a calendar. It doesn't go, oh, it's been five years, now we're safe. It says, yeah. no, this, this may be needed the rest of my life, and I'm going to store it in a place where I never forget. And when we start to think about those things, it becomes evident that, oh, it's not just what happened to me, mm -hmm. it's what happened inside of me. It's yeah. how I processed what was happening around me. And what's interesting too, off what you were saying, that our brain keeps track of it, that is a design thing from the Lord, mm -hmm. that it's a way that we are able to stay alive. Like if we touch a hot stove and it hurts, our brain is like, okay, don't do that again. That hurts, that sucks, so let's you know step away. And trauma is the same way. And I, I know in this conversation, we're gonna unpack how that plays out, but... Yeah, it isn't a bad design that your brain holds on to trauma like that, but it can be bad and have bad impact. 